Okay, so you know how you usually put six villagers on sheep at the start of the game? This is because this is the exact number you need on food to keep your town center constantly producing villagers. If you were to put seven on sheep instead, this would give you more food income than necessary. It's not like that food comes out of nowhere. There's always an opportunity cost. Adding more villagers than you need on food will mean that you'll be collecting less wood as you'll send villagers to build a lumber camp later. This can have a cascading effect on when you can afford buildings later on. If the standard build order is 6 on sheep, then 3 on wood, if you deviate from this, then you'll have to make some adaptations as you go so you can afford things. Normally, the only thing other than villagers to spend your food on in Dark Age is militia, which require you to collect wood first to make a barracks. Let's look at an optimized generic 3 militia drush build. Generally, you'll start with 6 on sheep, then 4 to wood so you can afford the barracks at a reasonable time. If you were to go 5 on sheep, then 4 on wood to try to get the barracks faster, then you'll end up idling your town center as you wouldn't have enough food income to maintain villager production. If you were to go 7 on sheep, then 4 on wood, then your barracks would be delayed as you'd be floating extra food instead of wood, which you can't spend anyways. Therefore, the optimal time to start sending to wood is after you can just barely maintain villager production, which is on 6 on sheep. After food sufficiency for villager production is achieved, the next step is to have militia being produced as fast as possible. We always want to think in terms of just barely being able to afford things. Any additional resources collected that you don't have a purpose for right away could have been another resource that you could have used instead. We can apply this thinking to how many we need to send to wood in order to have the barracks complete just as we have enough food to create militia until we have three of them. Since we're not trying to maintain militia production, we can rely a little bit on floated food to get those three militia out. If we start with three on wood, then the barracks comes up too late after we've already floated too much food. If we start with five on wood, the barracks comes up too early before we can afford to actually make our militia without idling the town center. This means that the sweet spot for this is four on wood. We've already established that 4 on wood is optimal, and gold and stone don't need to be collected yet for anything. So after sending those 4 to wood, the next villagers need to be collecting the food that will be used for the militia and eventually feudal age. This means sending to sheep and boars initially. After you've placed the barracks, the next thing to spend your wood on is a mill. Of course, you should be building houses when you need them, but you should always have a plan for what you'll be spending your resources on, especially wood. If done correctly, with regular boars and no deer pushed, you should be able to click to Feudal Age on 24 villagers. So, how does this generic drush build relate to this video's topic? There are two types of things that you can spend your resources on. Things that you want constant production of, and things that are one-time purchases. Constant production of villagers is the first thing that you do at the start of each game. On water maps, you might try to get constant fishing ship production directly after that. Knowing how many villagers you need on wood to maintain fishing ship production, plus a bit extra for houses, will allow you to have a smooth dark age on maps where you'll be making an early dock in fishing ships. The second type of spending are one-time purchases. These are usually upgrades, but in our Drush case, the three militia can also be considered in this category. The reason we don't want constant production in this case is because militia very quickly get shut down by walls, so hitting with two or three of them can sometimes hit that sweet spot timing where the opponent isn't prepared for it yet. Instead of trying to make more than just a few militia, getting to Feudal Age is a higher priority most of the time. Since these three militia are one-time buys, we just need to have our baseline six villagers on food, plus some additional food income. When saving for these one-time buys, you must consider the maintenance cost of your production buildings first. For much of the early game, this is just your six on food for villager production. A very common upgrade that you'll want to save for is fletching if you open men-at-arms archers for example. After you add your archery range and mining camp, the next big purchase with your wood is the blacksmith. 
Of course, there's no point in getting the blacksmith unless you can actually use it to get fletching right away. This involves having an additional 100 food in the bank as soon as the blacksmith completes. We've probably all been in this situation where we want fletching, but all the sheep just ran out and we can't even really keep the town center running just on berry income alone. In this situation, the priority is usually to keep the TC running by getting to 6 on food, which will likely be 4 on berries and 2 farms. Now that the TC can be maintained, we need to float enough food to get fletching as soon as the blacksmith completes. In order to float some food, we need to add some additional farms before adding the blacksmith. I usually find that going up to 9 on food and then adding the blacksmith works, but it depends on how much food you already have floating. The goal here is that you want to get fletching as soon as possible while maintaining villager production. This 9 on food number works even if you have zero floated food, so if you already have a bit of food in the bank at the time you're wanting fletching, then you may only need to get to 7 or 8 on food before adding the blacksmith. The important thing here is to understand how much of your economy needs to be reserved for maintaining unit production so that you can save up for any one-time buys that you need to make. Anytime that you have production buildings that you want to maintain production from, you need to make sure to maintain the correct villager count on each relevant resource to keep those buildings constantly working. Any additional income can then be spent on adding upgrades now, or eventually be reserved for future upgrades. I often see lower level players add too many stables in Feudal Age than their economy can support, so let's look at a little exercise that I've made to demonstrate how you can play full scouts in Feudal Age. Scouts opening requires very simple eco-management compared to infantry and archers openings. Therefore, it's a great opening to learn to understand these eco-management concepts that I'm talking about. Let's quickly touch on the macro goals for a 19 villager generic scouts opening. We want to have double bid axe and a stable being built as soon as we reach feudal age, followed by horse collar before placing any farms. Scouts play generally requires a good economy either late feudal or early castle age, so horse collar is usually a must. Sometimes you can skip it for the first few farms, but ideally we want to get it right away. Two lumber camps is more efficient than one, but some maps only allow for one to be safely taken. As soon as you click to feudal age, rebalance your economy to 7 on 1 lumber camp or 9 on 2 lumber camps. The reason we need two additional villagers on wood when on two camps is to pay off the cost of the second camp before reaching feudal age. Since each villager collects around 50 wood on the way to feudal age, those two additional villagers will pay for the second lumber camp. Four or five on berries is good, and the rest can be on sheep. We'll stick with four on berries for this demonstration. With this eco balance, you should be able to afford everything. I can prove this by using math, actually. What we need to afford is a bunch of things that cost wood, and then some things that cost food. Since we want to have as many scouts as possible initially, it's better to float food and not wood, so we want to just barely be able to afford a barracks, stable, and double bid axe by the time we reach feudal age. This is all worth 400 wood. Looking at the Dark Age Lumberjack gather rate, we can calculate that in the 130 seconds it takes to get to feudal age, we need 8 on wood to gather 400 of it. These gather rates are fairly optimal, and we're assuming we have all of the villagers collecting the whole time and not walking to the lumber camp. Since in reality it won't be that perfect, we add one additional villager just to be sure. We're only worried about food and wood at this stage, so once we do our wood balance, all other villagers can stay on food. Wood spending order is extremely important when it comes to efficiency. Once the stable and double bid axe are bought, the next order of action is horse collar and then farms. Remember, our goal is to get to constant scouts production, which requires 8 on food. Our number one priority is villager production though, so having a baseline of 6 on food is necessary. Any food income after that 6 on food can be invested into scouts or upgrades. You shouldn't worry about making a blacksmith until you have a good mass of scouts going. It really does depend on a lot of factors, which we won't get into here when deciding when to get upgrades, but for now, let's just focus on the macro side of things and leave strategy for another time. To achieve constant scouts and villagers, we need to get to 14 on food. Don't even think about adding a second stable until you have this number, because you won't be able to use it. Once you've gotten food sufficiency for one stable and one TC, then you can decide what to spend your additional wood on. You could get a mining camp to collect some gold, or maybe some additional walls to help secure a side of your base. 
Usually you'll still want to be adding farms as castle age, more scouts, and upgrades for scouts all cost food. But once you've reached food sufficiency for your production buildings, you can start spending wood on other things without delaying unit production. One-time purchases such as forging and scale barding armor require some floated food, so I'd recommend getting to food sufficiency for one stable and one DC plus three farms before adding a blacksmith. This will ensure you can use the blacksmith as it comes up. If you want bloodlines here, you should go to gold first and then add some more farms. Since you're using your stable for the research, you'll only need to float an additional 70 food, as you'll have the 80 food set aside for having food sufficiency for that stable. If your next goal is to go to Castle Age, additional farms are made in order to float food. If your next goal is to make a lot more scouts, you can add more farms in order to have enough food income to support more scout production. Since scouts require 8 on food to maintain production, getting to around half of that before adding the stable, and then adding the other half after the stable is complete will give smooth production, as you will rely on some banked food for the initial scout production while you add more farms to get to sufficiency. At some point, getting to castle age is pretty important, so don't feel like you have to keep your stables running at all times. With 15 farmers, you can collect 300 food in a minute, so skipping a production cycle or two can be fine in order to get castle age started. Understanding Ecobalance will allow you to efficiently adapt under any situation. This app that I built allows you to calculate the optimal Ecobalance for any unit production. Of course, it only gives you the balance you need for constant unit production, so you need to use this balance and then put a few more villagers on whatever resource you need to float enough for upgrades. Now that we understand the value of knowing how to maintain production, let's quickly go through some units that are worth remembering. To start it off, Eco Balance for Villager Production is the most important one to remember. On 1 TC, you'll need 6 farms. The exact number is 5.9, which is close enough to 6 that you can just remember that you need 6 farms per TC and you'll be fine. It's also useful to remember 3 TC with Wheelbarrow, as this comes up a lot. You only need 16 farms for 3 TC with Wheelbarrow. Next up is Scouts. If you want to have constant production of Scouts from one stable, you need 8 farmers. Since you should also be creating villagers at the same time, you need to add another 6, which equals 14. You also rely on some berry economy in the early game, so factoring in the fact that berries are collected slower than farms, you can determine that you should try to get to 15 on food in order to keep your stable and TC running, assuming 4 or 5 villagers are on berries. For archers, you mainly need to remember the gold cost, as newly created villagers in Feudal Age go to wood, so you will always have enough wood income. Each range requires around 3.5 villagers on gold to maintain archers, so you need 4 gold miners for one range, and 7 for two ranges. You generally won't get to 3 range in Feudal Age in 1v1s, but you might as well know that you need 11 on gold in this case. Since the crossbowman upgrade makes your archers train faster, you need to have more on gold to maintain production. For one range, it's 4 on gold, and for two ranges, it's 8. Three ranges is 12 on gold. These numbers are with the gold mining upgrade, as you'll usually have that at this point. Cavalry archers are pretty similar to crossbowmen when it comes to maintaining production. Actually, with the Hun's cavalry archer discount, you can make cavalry archers with the same number of villagers bringing in resources, with just a slightly different distribution weighted more towards wood. For generic cavalry archers, it's very slightly over 4 gold per range. You should be able to use 4 per range and then add one additional villager to make it work perfectly. Huns can stay with 11 on gold for 3 ranges, which is the most common number of ranges to open Castle Age with. Let's go back to the stable and look at knights. They're pretty expensive gold wise at just under 6 per stable. This means for 2 stables you need 12, and for 3 stables you need 18. Generally, you'll be relying on banked gold that you collect on the way to Castle Age. So, you can often make 2 or 3 stable play work for a while, even if you don't have gold sufficiency when you arrive to Castle Age. Knowing how many farmers to support production is also important here. Luckily for us, the numbers are exactly the same for knights as they are for villagers. This means with 18 farms, or 16 with wheelbarrow, you can support 1 TC bills and 2 stable knight production. This also has the side effect of being able to transition from knight production to 3 TC eco production very easily as you can just build your TCs with gold miners without changing your farm count. 
Of course, you'll want to add more farms shortly after you add TCs, but if you time it correctly, you can completely exhaust your gold bank just as your town centers complete, which means instead of spending food on knights, you can spend it on villagers while not having any extra gold in the bank. This is an extremely efficient way to add town centers after you get your initial knights out in early castle age. Commonly, you'll add monks with your knights, so for one monastery monks and two stable knights, you need 16 on gold. Often, your strategy will involve making forward mangonels, so for that you need around 7.5 on wood and 7 on gold. So for two stable knights and one siege workshop mangonels, you need just barely 19 on gold to keep that running. Crossbowmen also like to be paired with mangonels, so for two range and one workshop production, you need 15 on gold. I can't go over every combination here, but make sure to check out my app so you can learn some eco balances for yourself. Another very important eco balance tip is to know how many you need on wood to build a farm every time a villager is created in Feudal Age. With double bit axe, you need just over 5. Since you'll also need houses every 50 seconds or so, you can estimate that you need around 7 on wood to maintain farm and house production. Any additional wood will be floated if you're not spending it on units or walls. The last one I'll talk about here is only relevant on maps where you go for fishing ships early. To keep one dock working with houses coming up every 50 seconds or so, you need 6 on wood. 4.8 for the dock and then about 1.2 for the house. It's really tight, so 7 on wood should feel a bit smoother for this. And that's it for this one. If you want to learn a specific eco balance for any sieve with any bonuses, my app can help you out further.